again today again on listen God is speaking and the text comes from Proverbs 20, 12, the hearing ear and the seeing eye the Lord have made even both of them. And so last week I said, why do we need to hear from God? And we need to hear from God because it is the only way that we can live righteously, peaceably, prosper and have wisdom. And whenever a believer listens to the voice of God, I said he does not make mistake. Once you listen and obey the voice of God, because the writer of Psalm 119 says in verse 105, he says, the word, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. In verse 130 of the same Psalm, he says, the entrance of thy word gives light it gives understanding unto the simple. So the word of God is light. And it, when you listen for the voice of God and he speaks his word to you, it will order your steps that there will be no failure. I said when you are waiting to hear from God, you must talk less and listen more. Because if you talk, 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 and God is talking, you don't hear. Psalm 62 verse 5 says, My soul waits silently for God alone, for my expectation is from him. So this psalm conveys the idea that the psalmist is sitting and he's in a quiet position. He's in his prayer closet, he's in his posture of prayer, but he's silent because he wants to hear whenever God speaks. The prophet Zechariah says in chapter 2, verse 13, Be silent, O all flesh, before the Lord. Jeremiah says in Lamentations 3, 26, It is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. And that's why you're being silent, because whatever God says, it is going to bring about your salvation. And the word salvation means your deliverance, your prosperity, whatever you need. If you enter God's presence with anger, it will prevent you from hearing God's voice because anger is usually accompanied with rage, revenge, or unforgiveness. Unforgiveness will cut off your access to God and his counsel because Jesus Christ already says in Matthew chapter 6, he says, if you don't forgive men their trespasses against you, your heavenly father is not going to forgive you. So if you want to hear from God and you're still mad and angry and unforgiven, you're not going to hear anything because your emotions are in turmoil. You've got to come into God's presence. You've got to forgive the wrong. You've got to release the anger. You've got to ask God for his peace to calm you down and the Holy Spirit to bring you into the presence of God and then once that is done, then you are set to hear from God. Amen? Today, I want to begin on ways in which God speaks. Now, I must make known that the voice of God is firstly peaceable. Whenever God speaks, and whatever God says, whether it is yes, no, not now, or there's no response at all, whether he says to you, like he says in Revelation, I have somewhat against you, or he says to you, I am pleased with you, or he calls you Hepzibah, which means my delight is in you. Whatever God says always brings peace, it brings calm, and it gives us a confident expectation. Anytime anyone gives you a prophetic word, and it leaves you frightened, in trepidation, in panic, feeling in that kind of way, you know, like if somebody says, when you come to work Friday, you're going to get fired and you get all of that kind of negative feeling. Anytime anyone gives you a word from God and it leaves you feeling like that, it did not come from God. Are you hearing me? Anytime you get a word from God that frightens you, that calls you to feel in you know, you have trepidation and you get all of this belly hurt and all of the squeeziness. It did not come from God. That is a demonic spirit masquerading as if it is the Holy Spirit. Whatever God tells you, if God himself is saying to you, I am not pleased with your behavior. 
it doesn't leave you frightened. It brings you to a place because the voice of God is light. And so when God talks to you about your bad behavior, he causes you to see how you have been behaving. And then you say, Lord, forgive me. I've done wrong. You know, wash me in the blood of Jesus. But God doesn't speak to terrify us. The voice of God, when he speaks to a believer, when he speaks to a practicing born-again Christian, it is always peaceable whether, he's, whether it is the voice of commendation, rebuke, or reproof. His voice always brings peace because God's objective is always to bring you to him and to bring you to a place of righteousness rather than to drive you away from him. So one of the ways to recognize the voice of God is through the peace you have in your spirit in the midst of the chaos, the trouble, and the dilemma. You can be in the midst, let's say, let's say you were Moses, and Pharaoh and his army is coming, and 3.5 million people say, oh God, he bring us here to kill us. Stone him, throw him over into the Red Sea, and in the midst of all that mayhem, you just have a peace. The voice of God. Peace. You can have peace in the midst of the storm. You can have peace in the chaos. One of the ways to recognize the voice of God is the peace you have when he doesn't answer. It is the peace you have when you still don't know what to do after you've told God everything that is going on. It is the peace you have when you are in desperate need. That peace is the voice of God saying to you, everything is all right. I have proven that. And most of the time it comes when it is something that I can't do. Let's suppose I get a call to preach in Pennsylvania, even Friday night, Sunday night, any day of the week. I don't have transportation. And even if I went to Grand Central and I got um, the New Jersey Transit and transferred to the Scepter train, when I get in Pennsylvania, I still can't even get to the church where I'm supposed to be. But God has opened the door for me to preach in Pennsylvania, even all the way to Georgia, Boston, Connecticut, and I don't have a vehicle. And there's no Brooklyn train going to Connecticut. But I just have a peace. I just have this peace on the inside of me that transportation is going to turn up. And sometimes I call everybody that I know who know me and say, sis, I got to work that day. Sis, I can't be absent because I'm on in the choir. Everybody I know tells me no, but I just have this peace. This peace on the inside of me, the voice of God. Peace is the voice of God that tells me you are going to get to Pennsylvania. And then all of a sudden, I'm walking it out. I say, God, I'm trusting you. And then all of a sudden, the, the thought comes, call Sister Gloria. I've never called Sister Gloria yet. I said, Sister Gloria, I need to get to Pennsylvania. When you're going, it's a Friday night. She said, well, that's good. I have to go down there to my daughter. I can take you. You see what I'm saying? I have seen God done that over and over again. Peace is the voice of God. And when you have that peace, live in it. Don't let the circumstance pull you out because that is God's voice saying to you, I have taken care of it. Just trust me. The matter is going to be resolved. And so anytime a situation that is impossible rises up and I go to God and I come up with peace, he doesn't say, okay, I'm going to send an Uber. This is going to happen. That is going to happen. I just keep saying, I have my peace. God is doing it. You know, you get to realize it. Now I have my peace. Something is going to manifest. And so when you listen for the voice of God, like I said, you can't tie down the voice of God to a voice like mine that whenever you hear it, you say, that's evangelist. He speaks in diverse ways. And if you have peace, then live in the peace. Something is going to work out and keep looking for it keep expecting it and keep listening for anything else God may say because he promises that he will make your way 
perfect. So peace is a voice of God that he floods our life with when we need confirmation. He gives us peace. And once you have that peace, don't try to, to disturb your peace by saying, but how is it going to happen? Who is going to do it? God is speaking to you and saying, I got your back. It's going to work out. Just trust me. Just praise me. Don't allow what is going on around you. Even when somebody says, let me get back to you on Friday. And when they get back to you on Friday, they give you bad news. You have your peace. You have your peace. God has spoken. And when he spoke, he knew that that sister, that brother, couldn't do the thing for you. So you have to trust God. Listen, God is speaking, and he speaks by his peace. Another way in which God speaks is his still small voice. Sometimes God was speaking a gentle whisper, a quiet, gentle sound, a soft voice. So that if you're not paying close attention, you can miss it. And sometimes God speaks in this way because he's training your ears to be sensitive to his voice. Because as Christians, we have to live in the spirit 24 hours a day. You have to live in the spirit. In spite of what you are doing, you must stay in the spirit. And sometimes when God speaks, if you don't recognize it, you, you can miss it. I, I, I remember a sister was bringing me home um, from the Bronx. And she heard the voice of God saying quietly, hit that exit. She said, no, I can go this way. And then we find ourselves in a traffic jam because of an accident for a long, long time. It is then she said, I heard the voice. The Lord told me, take the exit. Just a, just a quiet sound, just a quiet sound. Even though God's voice thunder, he can speak in the softest whisper. The Bible tells us in 1 Kings 19, 11 to 12, it says, The Lord said to Elijah, go out of the cave and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great strong wind rent the mountain and break it in peace and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind and earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake of fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. When Elijah heard it, he covered his face with his coat and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then the Lord asked Elijah, why are you here? So the Lord did a lot of fantastic demonstrations, earthquake and rock breaking into peace of wind and fire and all of that. And Elijah's in the cave and he said, that's not God. He's not, it was, God was the one doing it. But he, Elijah knew that that was not the voice of God. It was an act of God, the difference. That's why we have to grow in God. To distinguish, the Bible tells us that the children of Israel only recognized God was around when they saw an act of God, but Moses knew the ways of God. Elijah recognized everything that I am hearing and seeing is an act of God, but I'm waiting for the voice of God. Because it is by the voice of God that I move. And he was so silent that when he heard the still small voice, he came out of the cave. And God now says, what are you doing here, Elijah? Because you are not supposed to be in the cave. And God went on to give Elijah instructions. And so you must, when you live in the spirit, and when you pray to God and you're waiting for an answer, you have to make sure that you are connected to your spiritual hi-fi. That's what I call it. Not Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is limited to Sprint and T-Mobile and to Metro Plus. But I'm talking about the hi-fi that goes beyond the sun and the moon and the stars and the second heavens that comes out of the third heaven where God dwells. Because you can imagine... How far where God is, because no one knows where the third heaven is. They can only get to the, to the first heaven, go to the moon. Nobody's going to the sun because they don't want to be burned to death. They can only get to the first heaven, and they have some kind of measurement of so many light years it is away. Could you imagine the voice of God coming from a distance farther than that? But yet still you hear the whisper. Isn't he an awesome God? He is an awesome God. So one of the ways he, he speaks 
is in a still small voice and you have to walk in the spirit for this as sons of God we have to live in the spirit and walk in the spirit another way in which God speaks is an impression in your spirit an inner witness or inner knowing without a shadow of a doubt you just know you have a spiritual intuition have you ever experienced that the Holy Spirit transmits the knowledge or the information he wants us to have about something as a strong inner knowing. You just know. You know, sometimes people tend to think that they're going to surprise you. But you just have an inner knowing that when you get there, this is what this person is going to do. They're going to tell you no. They plan to tell you no. Especially sometimes when people are malicious like that, they just want to hurt or damage you. And God give you that inner knowing. You just know it. You didn't hear the Lord say she's not going to sign it for you. But you just have that inner knowing that the person is not going to do it. And you just, you pray and you go. And they're looking for you to cry or to be disappointed. And you say, that's fine. When can I come back? And now, because you turn captivity captive. They're looking for you to be depressed and to, to stir up a storm, but you have that inner knowing, and you have your peace, and you have your confidence, or all things uh, are going to work together. Listen, when a Christian lives in God, nobody can mess with you. God will give you the inside school. You have that inner knowing, that inner witness, and you come, and then... After you behave like that, they say, okay, sit down, sit down. Let, let, let me see what you could do right quick. Uh, you know, they try to put the blame on the girl, the manager, you know, the postman, whatever the case may be. And you go, oh, thank you. <laughs> but you already know. And so what you do, the hand now with the enemy, the power of the enemy is weakened. Because you come with that faith and that trust and in the ability of God that no weapon form against me shall prosper. That's why it's important to know the voice of God because some people hear the voice of God, but they stay miserable. In my younger days as a Christian, I didn't understand it. God would show me things and tell me things, and I would do nothing about it. I would just say, the Lord show me so and so, and it is going to happen. Whenever I dream about it, it has happened. And I would just wait for the disaster to happen. Not knowing he was showing me to do something about it. To prepare me to triumph over it. To speak a word against it and bring it to naught in the name of Jesus. So we don't have to fret when you get an inner witness that this is what the person is going to do. You just say, God, I thank you. And you rise up with the sword of the spirit and turn the counsel of Ahithophel to foolishness. You stand up in your dynamis power and exude the authority. Authority, and you could begin to bind, uh, take hold of the keys of heaven, uh, the keys of the kingdom, and begin to bind up everything the enemy is trying to do. Why? You've got an inner witness. You've got foreknowledge. You know, um, people, that they get foreknowledge of somebody, tell them what stocks are going to go down, and then they get locked up for that. Uh, but what God gives us, it puts us ahead of the enemy. The Holy Spirit is the one who bears witness in our conscience. He is the one that is responsible for the inner witness. And so when you get that inner witness, recognize it is the voice of God. Because you want to know how God speaks. And he's telling you, this is one of the ways I speak. I give you an inner witness. If God tells you, don't sign it. Don't receive it. If he tells you, don't go. If he tells you, don't cook and bring anything because you don't want anybody to say you're a peach cobbler, make them sick. Listen to the inner witness. When, and when he says, don't give, don't give. If he says, don't bring that person to your home, don't bring it. Don't receive the call. Don't give them your number. God is protecting you. That is his voice speaking to you. The thing with us Christians we doubt the voice of God at least 75% of the time. And when the unsaved go to the Obia man, they don't doubt Satan. The fear alone that he releases makes you believe his lie. 
Because if the OVM man says, you know, you need to do so and so and burn so and so in them because they're doing X, Y to you, they're going to get the candle and they start a burning. When God tells us they're burning candles against you, nah, no, God won't say something like that. Oh, yes, he does. God speaks to us in our language as he spoke to the Jews in their language. So when God tells you somebody's doing something, he gives you that inner witness. That's his voice. Hearken to the voice of God because you will not fail. You will not be defeated and you will not be destroyed if you listen to the voice of God and obey. Are you hearing the Holy Spirit? Another way the Lord speaks. Is by commanding the heart as seen in 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 8 to 9, which says, The word of What the Lord wanted her to do for his prophet. Notice, God did not speak directly to her in a loud, audible voice or a widow, but he commanded the heart. And many of us, God has done that. Have you ever been minding your own business? And then all of a sudden, you, you, you get this, I'm trying to find the right word. You, you, you get this feeling, buy some potatoes for so-and-so. That, that has ever happened to you? <laughs> or you're doing your budget and you're saying, I, I need another $700 to make this work out. And then it's like something in your heart saying, give so-and-so $200. Has that ever happened to you? That is God commanding your heart. He isn't speaking to your spirit. But he's putting that thing in your heart that comes up. It co once God put it on, on the inside, it comes up just like that. And um, most recently, the Lord told me um, about giving this Christian minister um, in another country some money. So he didn't talk to me, but I'm there watching TV. And the thought came, you know, if I get a good honorarium, this is how, how the command came. You know, if I get a good honorarium, I would give so-and-so X amount of money, just like that. And the thing stayed with me. It's in there. It's living. It's living. It's living. This command in my heart is living and living. And I didn't get the good honorarium, but as soon as I got the amount of money, I sent it off to the woman of God. And everything left me. God commands our heart. This widow woman lived in the city where Baal worship was central. That's where Jezebel's father was king. And that place was given over to Baal worship. But even in the worst places, God can find a heart that he can command. He says in the scripture, he will cause the enemy to entreat us well in the time of adversity and in the time of affliction. Now, Elijah is running from Jezebel in Israel. He's running from the promised land that God has given to him as a Jew, a descendant of Jacob. And God takes him right where the enemy lives in Sidon and Hizen. So Ahab is looking all through Israel. Trying to find him and can't find him. And he's living over in his father-in-law country. Because God commanded a widow woman to do that. And so sometimes when acts of kindness and acts of charity, acts of goodness, sometimes when God tells you to make a phone call, whatever God tells you to do, whatever comes up to you, I just feel like making this phone call, like we say, that is God commanding your heart to do good. That's why there's a necessity for God to circumcise the heart. Because if the heart is not circumcised, it is not going to be spiritually positioned to do what God needs done. And so it must be a circumcised heart. 
When you say, Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul, and I live for you alone, whenever God is ready, he can begin to talk to that heart. He can begin to deposit things in your spirit to do. And so one of the ways in which God speaks is by commanding the heart. Everybody's just looking for audible voice, but he speaks in different ways. And as you live and walk in the spirit, you will hear God speak to you. Another way in which God speaks is through a thought. Have you ever had a thought? It's through a thought. Or a suggestion in your spirit. When God speaks to us in this manner, sometimes we don't hear it because it can feel as if it is coming from us and not God. And I've experienced that. Where God can speak to you in a thought. Years ago, um, the lady I was renting from, she said to me, you need to leave my place by the end of this month. And God said to me, he, he told me to call this particular sister that had some room in her basement down in there where you have the water tank and the hot water, that kind of stuff. And she had a washer and dryer down there. And there was enough space down there that I can just store my stuff. So when the landlord pushed open the door and she said, you need to leave my place by the end of the month, the Lord said to me, call this sister and ask her she will keep your stuff for me. And I knew it was God that said that. But what he said to me was something that I would have done when I didn't use to trust God. I used to think like that. And so it's like, Lord, I know it is you, but it sounds like me. I know it is you, but it sounds like me. And then I called the sister and I says, this is what the Lord told me to tell you. But it still sounds like me, but I know it's the Lord. <laughs> because I, I used to depend upon my human wisdom so much without trusting God. That was something that I surely would have done. And I was, I was convinced 100%. I knew it was God. I felt his presence, his anointed. I felt everything with me for his word to come to pass. But I was still saying it sounded like me but in the end God proved to be true true and it was God and so sometimes God speaks to us in a thought and it may sound natural and because it sounds like something human something that you would think something you were planned to do like suppose the thought come to you why not take some chocolate chip cookies to Sunday school you say but that sounds like me but that is God. The thought is of God. The thing is, when it comes from God, it doesn't rest until it happens. Because the word of God is spirit and life. And that life in you wants to be birthed. And so you have to, I'm not talking about leaning into your own understanding. And I'm not talking about, some people use their mind. Like, I hear God in my mind. I said earlier, he speaks to the spirit. But I'm also saying that he plants thoughts in you. That's, that's a different aspect altogether. And so sometimes you can get a thought. You might be asking God how to solve your problem, um, how to get more customers. And a thought may come, why not um, open Twitter? That might sound like an everyday thing. But sometimes God speaks everyday things that is his will for our lives. But when you walk in the spirit and you're connected to the Holy Spirit, you can determine when the thought is born of the flesh and when it is born of the spirit. And there's nothing ever wrong with double checking. Once you, God knows and you know that you're only double checking because you want to obey God. You want to please God. You want to do right by God. There's nothing wrong with double checking. But once it is of God, it will live and it will speak in a voice that is even different from when it comes from you. Amen? Amen. So God speaks in a whisper. He speaks in a thought. He speaks, hallelujah, by an inner witness, and he speaks by the voice of peace. Those are some of the voices of God that I can cover today. If I start anymore, I'm not going to be able to finish it. I still have some other ways in which God speaks. But it is very important for you to know when God speaks. 
And it is very important for each of you as an individual to be confident in hearing and knowing the voice of God. There's nothing wrong with calling a sister or brother to say, I need to know if I really heard from God. There's nothing wrong with that. But you cannot live like a baby that is just born from out of the womb where you have to wait for somebody to give you a bottle and change your pamper and shower you. We must become mature believers in the voice of God. God. We have to stop depending on prophets and prophetesses and people who, who proclaim to be prophetically inclined to hear from God and understand that God is your father and he wants to speak to you. How many of you in here are parents? Is there ever a time that you don't speak to your child or children? Is there ever a time? Do you leave your children to depend on me telling them what to do? Oh, mommy, I can't do that because evangelist Lashie told me that I'm not to do that. You speak to your children and you give them the counsel and the advice that they need to be good citizens. In the same way God speaks to each of us. If he chooses to use a prophet, that is God's prerogative. But every day, one way or another, whether you read the scriptures and God begins to unfold the world to you, you must be an independent believer in the sense that you are religious lying on the spirit of God to speak to you, to lead you and guide you. You cannot be a dependent believer that you can only move if the archbishop, the pastor, the master prophet, the church mother, the head intercessor says to you, thus saith the Lord. That is a dangerous place to be spiritually. Jesus said, my sheep, and sheep is plural whether it is singular or group. My sheep know my voice. And the voice of a stranger they will not go after. And so it is important to you to know God's voice. No man is infallible and that includes me. And so if I get up here and I say something that is contrary to what God has said to you, you better do what God says to you. Are you hearing me? Because all of us are growing. Maybe you have grown in a place that I am now coming into. And when I get there, I will be on the same page with you. That's why the Apostle Paul says, uh, let those of us that are mature think this way. Because babies and young children always want candy. They're not concerned about cavities. But you have to say no. Drink some water, not soda. So it's important for you to know the voice of God for yourself. And to know how God relates to you. Hmm? Every spouse will tell you of, of how his or her um, wife or husband respond to them romantically why every individual is different hmm? everybody responds to their wife in terms of or husband in terms of intimacy differently and so if you read when a spouse passes or when you get remarried you have to adjust to this one because he's not like that one you see what I'm saying? That one would have opened the car door. This one tell you, jump in, I'm going. <laughs> I'm using that to say to you that each of us have a different kind of spiritual intimate relationship with the Lord. And you've got to know him for yourself. You can't know him like how I know him because I'm different from you in personality. I like a lot of love and a lot of tenderness and a lot of sweetheart darling and honey and sugar palm. You may not like that. You may be a warrior woman, you know, that kind of stuff. I like a lot of pampering. And, and the Lord said to me years ago, he said, Heather, you've been trying to get me for years to pamper you and I'm not going to do it. I don't pamper warriors. 
So I don't get all of that honey sugar plum from the Lord. I get stand strong. Face the enemy in the name of Jesus. And <laughs> sometimes when I'm talking to people, I have to go ahead and pull back, pull back. I say, well, in the name of Jesus Christ, I jump in there, man, like Arnold Schwarzenegger, and I'm gone. You know, and some people, they're not like that. I'm saying it's a personal relationship. And so don't covet mine and don't want God to talk to you like me because he didn't make you like that. Get to know him for yourself. Get to know God when you're in the shower. Get to know God when you're in the kitchen. Get to know God in every aspect of life. Because when you know God for yourself and somebody comes and tells you otherwise, that's why the five wise virgins wouldn't share their oil. The foolish ones out there, they don't want to be ready for the bridegroom. And now I've developed this relationship. You're going to tell me to give you some of what I got to get. You better go get your stuff. I'm keeping all my oil. I want to be ready when he comes. I'm keeping all my intimacy. I'm keeping all my joy. I'm keeping all my peace. I am Hepzibah in the eyes of the Lord. That's why it's important to know God's voice. Because if you go to one of these global conferences... And these big wigs come out and they start to tell you whatever, whatever. When you know God's voice, he's right there in the midst of the conference saying, that's not me. Rebuke that in the name of Jesus. He said, get up from among them. Don't sit in the seat of the scornful. And you can say, excuse me out of here. Let me get back to my place of safety. Why? You know God's voice. And there are many pastors and leaders that like to keep people dependent on them. They can't buy and sell and trade and hear God and do anything unless somebody else says so. That's not how God set it up. That's not how God set it up. It's not the Old Testament system where the spirit of God was only on the godly king or the godly priest or the godly prophet and you had to find a prophet. We are now a royal priesthood. We are now filled with the spirit and so we have access ourselves to come boldly before the throne of God to hear. That's why you want to hear the voice of God because you want to know what to do. So you don't have to wait on Wednesdays to hear because if it is snow you can't come what are we going to do you don't have to wait on Sunday morning because if there's bombing and the churches are closed what are you going to do what are you going to do when you have to run for your life you need the spirit of God to tell you what to do and where to go you need to know that you dwell in the secret place of the most high God and under the shadow of the almighty you need to hear God when you are called to the board meeting and human resource and they were plotting all month uh, and now they call you to take your head off you need to hear God saying that, that your feet are ordered in the Lord uh, and you walk in with an anointing that will cause people who have planned to accuse you to say I can't do it she didn't do it it is nothing but a lie you need to hear the voice of God in every decision that you are going to make you cannot make human decisions and expect a supernatural outcome. Are you hearing me? You cannot use your own wisdom and expect God to back it up. Because like I said, the only promise God made to you and I is that he will perform the word that he gave to you. And so whatever you do is on you. If you go and marry somebody that God tell you not to marry, it's not God's responsibility to fix it. Hmm? If you buy a house in Timbuktu, it's not God's responsibility to get land in Brooklyn to put the house. No, you did that. In all thy ways, acknowledge me, and I will direct your path. And so every believer wants to hear God's voice primarily because you want to know what to do and you want to succeed in your efforts. Amen? Stand with me in the presence of the living God. I want to listen, I want to hear, and I want to obey. I want to listen, I want to hear, and I want to obey. If I listen, and I hear, and I don't obey, then whatever happens, it is on me. 
You know what I've noticed? People who don't have medical insurance would do anything to be able to see a doctor. And then I see people who are blessed with medical insurance and they tell you, I don't like that doctor thing. So they don't get a, a mammogram. They don't get a pap smear. They don't get a colonoscopy. They don't go to the dentist. And every month the money is coming out. And they're doing nothing with the policy. And then all of a sudden the ambulance come. And then when you get there you hear, oh, it is stage four cancer. If you had had such and such in 2013, we would have been able to take this out of you. That is what we do when we hear the voice of God. And God tells us not to do it. And we ignore the voice of God and says, it looked pretty. It looked good. It sounds good. I can't see how this thing will fail. I can't see how this is not going to be sweet. And then when you get it, you realize only the outer coating was sweet. But inside, bitter, bitter like God. We want to hear God to obey. That's the chief reason for the prophetic. To hear God and to obey what he says. Give God the benefit of the doubt. The Bible tells us, let God be true and every man be a liar. Amen. Raise your hands. Father, today, I thank you that we are willing and an obedient people. Each of us standing here today and even those who have gone. We want to hear you, and we want to obey you. We want you to tell us what to buy and what not to buy, what to rent and what not to rent, when to shop and when not to shop. Father, we want you to take control of our entire lives. We want you to tell us who is to be a friend and who is not to be a friend, who to keep company with and who not to keep company with. What mortgage company, what insurance company that we are to take out policies with. We want you to tell us if we should have a cell phone and a Kindle and a laptop and a desktop, all that technology. We want you to tell us when we, when we go to get cable, if we should get HBO and all the other channels that makes the bill more than we can pay. Father, we need you to guide us even in raising our children, what schools to send them to. Uh, mighty God, that when we speak, we mean what we say, so that our children would respect our authority and the voice of God in us. Lord, we don't want to hear your voice uh, as to have something that we can brag and boast about. Uh, oh, I hear God all the time, uh, and he said this, and he said that, uh, and we say it at times to make people feel uh, inferior, but today, God, we are saying to you, uh, speak Lord, uh, for your servant is listening uh, because we want to prosper. We want to succeed. Uh, we want to make God decisions. Uh, we want victory over the enemy uh, in the name of Jesus Christ uh, because we are now aware that when we don't consult you uh, and we go and do what seems right in our own eyes uh, that you have not promised us in the word uh, that that you will clean up our mess after we have ignored you. It is by your grace and your mercy that you do it. But you are not bound or obligated to do it. But we want to hear you when we ask. We want to hear you that we may know what to do. We want to prosper. And so anoint our spirits. Anoint our spiritual ears. Circumcise our hearts. Renew us in the spirit of our mind uh, that we can hear you uh, whether it's a divine thought uh, whether mighty God you've commanded the heart uh, whether you've deposited it in our spirits uh, we want to hear uh, we want to obey uh, we want to live in victory uh, in the name uh, of Jesus Christ the son uh, of the living God Rababa Shata Rabba Kandaya Ngondo Rababa Siki Sakaya we want want to walk in the spirit. We want to live in the spirit. We want to be anointed and full of divine wisdom. Father, you said in the book of James, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all men liberally and upbraid if not. Father, we ask for wisdom today. Divine wisdom. Wisdom to make wise business decisions. Wisdom, God, to invest in stock 
walks and shares. Uh, wisdom to expand our business. Uh, wisdom, mighty God, in our giving. Uh, Father, we want to hear uh, what we should do uh, in the midst of the storm. Uh, when we are persecuted for righteousness' sake, uh, we want to hear. We want to obey. Uh, we want to succeed. Uh, we want to know, mighty God, uh, from you uh, what the enemy is up to uh, and how to circumvent uh, his plans and plots and conspiracies. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, give us the faith uh, to listen to your voice, uh, to recognize it, uh, to trust it and obey it. Uh, give us the faith, mighty God, uh, to act upon what you tell us uh, even when it does not make any sense. Uh, give us the faith to believe uh, that God said it uh, and because he said it, uh, he will bring it to pass. Uh, bless this body of believers today. Uh, bless them to rise up uh, as confident believers uh, knowing the voice of God. Uh, however you speak, uh, whether it's a still small voice, uh, whether mighty God, uh, it is peace uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, whether mighty God, uh, it's an inner witness uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, an impression uh, or you've commanded the heart uh, or a divine thought today, God. Uh, we thank you uh, that this anointing that we are under has anointed our spiritual ears uh, that we will hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Father, every decision that we have already made out of human wisdom, we cancel it now in the name of Jesus Christ. And we position our spirits to hear you. Everything other people tell us to do that they did, that worked out for them, that was born of the flesh, whatever is of the flesh will wreak corruption. We want to hear it from you uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, we are not writing the letter unless you say write the letter. We are not setting the appointment uh, unless you say set the appointment. Uh, we are not choosing an insurance company unless you tell us which one in the name of Jesus Christ we're not choosing a lawyer just because he's a Jew being a Jew doesn't guarantee victory, obeying God guarantees victory in the name of Jesus Christ whatever decisions and contracts and business dealings, relationships buying and selling stocks and trade whatever we do God we want to do it by the leading of the spirit of the living God and so we surrender to God Almighty uh, we surrender our will uh, we declare that Jesus Christ uh, him alone is Lord of our lives uh, and whatsoever he saved unto us to do uh, we are going to do the will of God uh, in the name of Jesus uh, receive the anointing uh, to recognize the voice of God uh, receive the grace uh, to hearken unto the voice of God uh, for the Bible tells us uh, that the angels that excel in strength uh, they hearken uh, to the voice of God uh, if you want victory in your warfare hearken to the voice of God uh, if you want to get out of debt uh, hearken to the voice of God if you want to be healed uh, in your body hearken to the voice of God uh, if you want victory uh, over oppression uh, and the demonic edicts of men uh, hearken to the voice of God live in the spirit uh, live right uh, and do right uh, and God will fulfill uh, every promise he has made to you I thank you Jesus I bring the prayer request in this basket Lord God, I bring it under this anointing. I bring it under this anointing. And I thank you, God, for victory and deliverance. I believe that your servants will hear your voice speak. For your word declares that the voice of your teacher will not be far from you. But you would hear the voice of the Lord behind you saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. I praise you God I praise you God I bless the name of the one true and the living God in the name of Jesus Christ hallowed be thy name every blessing is ours the Lord declares in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19 
that if you are willing and obedient to the voice of God, that you would eat the good of the land. What is the good of the land? Not only the food, uh, but all the blessings that God has promised will be yours. Uh, in the name of Jesus, you'll get deliverance. Uh, you'll get victory. Your enemies will become your footstool. Uh, your ignorance will be turned to knowledge. Uh, your weakness will become strength. Uh, your fear will become courage. Uh, your doubt will become faith. Uh, your sorrow will become joy. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, your barrenness will will become fertile hallelujah in the name of Jesus uh, when it is midnight you'll have a song to sing uh, in the name of Jesus Christ uh, the joy of the Lord will be your strength uh, you'll be the head and not the tail uh, you'll be a lender not a borrower in the name of Jesus Christ uh, all your children will rise up uh, and call you blessed uh, if you are willing and obedient uh, if you will trust God uh, and obey the voice of the Lord your God uh, and all that he tells you to do. Uh, sickness will walk out of your body. Uh, pain will leave your body. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, your children will confess the Lord uh, and call him up in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, your enemies uh, will come to you like Naaman, uh, the Syrian, the enemy of the Jews uh, that came to God for healing. Uh, your enemies will come to you uh, as Joel's friend uh, had to come and ask him uh, to pray the prayer a blessing upon their lives if you be willing and obedient only with your eyes shall you see the reward of the wicked and release the power of the living God in this place and upon your life to stir you up to resurrect you to revive you, uh, to restore you, uh, to put you on a higher plane uh, than you have ever known. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Bless the offering, God. Bless the gifts of your people. Father, continue to increase us as you promise, for you will not befall anything good. From them that walk uprightly. I admonish you today. And I dare command you in the Holy Ghost to hear the voice of God. For he that has an ear to hear must hear what the Spirit of the Lord is speaking. And like I said earlier, the voice of God doesn't terrify or call us to be in dread and panic. But the voice of God is peaceable. Hear the voice of God. Be guided by it. And not allow the spirits of men or the well wishes of men to cause you to sorrow because you put the voice of a finite human being uh, above the voice of an infallible God, a God that is rich in wisdom and knowledge and quick understanding, who knows all things beforehand uh, and who sees all things. Uh, I invoke the name of the Lord Jesus Christ upon you. Uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Uh, may the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Uh, may the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you, uh, both now and for evermore for in this way God says uh, when my name is invoked upon my people uh, the name of Yahweh the name of Jehovah he said then will they be blessed uh, receive your blessing uh, receive your spiritual growth uh, and receive ears and minds and thoughts and hearts and spirits uh, that hear the voice of God and will and obey God bless you hallelujah